Uncharted 1 was a game that was not amazing. It was not the game of what 2, 3, 4 eventually became to be, which are some amazing games. Some of the best games on the Sony's platform that you can get currently for Sony's platform. You know, they did some things really well in Uncharted 1, but you know, they also had some things they really needed to work on. So for example, for Uncharted 1, the things they did well, the game looked beautiful, the story was good, they had a great use of facial animations and had a real big foundational set for what the future games behold. But the things they did need to improve on on that game was the gunplay was really wonky and not really tight and as, as good as it was and as good as it was until the later games. The environments were too similar. The story was a little bit too short for the experience that you're looking for in a big action adventure game. So just because it was a good game doesn't mean that you should count it out immediately because you could get in an Uncharted series like the first game was good and the next ones became great. And I feel like Days Gone is in that same boat in regards to being a good game that has great foundational things that put it different than any other game that's out there on the market and easily they can take this and build on it and make it even better. Sony Bend is a studio. This this is their first attempt at a AAA game before. They have never done anything in the large scale like this before. And so seeing this as a great opportunity for them to build off what they have done, this is a good game. Welcome to my review of Days Gone. For all my reviews, they will be spoiler free. And don't worry if you want to talk spoilers. We will have an additional video to this one called Spoiler Talk and it will be out tomorrow. So look forward to that. So I ask in the comments below, please do not spoil this game. There are plenty of spoilers in it. So wait till the spoiler talk that is out tomorrow, which then we can talk about everything and anything when it comes to Days Gone. Now, Days Gone takes place in current time, at least two years ahead of time, with a, a biker named Deacon who has survived an initial flood of a, of a virus that has created creatures that attack different living things and has wiped out a lot of humanity. Not all of humanity, there are still some left that are alive, but it wiped out a good portion of the humanity that is out there. And it's been two years since the end of it all. And Deacon is trying to find a way to move on with his life and just learn how do you move on from what everything you had to everything you have now. And not only just emotionally, personally, environmentally, there's just so many aspects of just when you lose something like that, to move on from it. it is just a great story on its own and along the way he has characters friends that he does know and he works along with to find the meaning to keep on living the meaning to survive he was also married uh, the important point he was also married to his wife that he had lost in the day the world had ended for him and he's also working on to move on from that as well and just it's been two years, but he still is dealing with the loss of his wife. Now, the game tells a story in a very interesting way. And it is the, it's probably the most interesting way of storytelling that I've seen in regards to video game style. And it tells it in the example I'll use. It's, it, it tells it in a TV show style. It's an, there's always an, in this, there's an overarching story that's from the beginning to the end of the, uh, end of the, uh, end of the game. But within that is also segments of each mission has multiple store has a has one story that goes through multiple missions that hits multiple uh, points where it feels like its own contained self-contained story. So it's like an episode inside the giant arc of the season. And this game is very, very long with its story. Just playing the story, main story elements, you're getting 40 hours. Of this game and not including the additional side missions you can do which are smaller episodes in this 40 hour arching story now the overarching story does have smaller segment stories within it that are 
that are like episodes, just like the side missions are. It's not just the side missions that feel like episodes. It's the whole story feels like there are episodes within it. And then you have that overarching narrative. And overall, it's really quite enjoyable. It makes the side missions a lot more in, uh, a lot more exciting and more enjoyable to do because the gameplay itself, element-wise, is very, very similar. But the way you go about everything and the reason you're going to that space is a, for a very different reason. And it creates a motivation for you that's more interesting in regards to just pushing more narratively than gameplay-wise even though the gameplay is quite satisfying and we'll talk about that later. But multiple times I um I felt like the sto- uh, the story was wrapping up. But overall uh I felt like the story was wrapping up a bunch of times like a TV episode, but then all of a sudden I was like, "Oh wait, no, this is just the second act. Wait, no, this is just the first act. There's a whole another act coming into play." This thing, like I said, 40 hours and just doing the main storyline. This game is enormous and it is a lot and it's just really surprising. The only thing that I would say that when I was first experiencing this game and doing the doing the doing the missions and all that kind of stuff, you're spending time with characters that you have no idea of the history of your relationship with them. And in some aspects you're trying to the character you're with is caring about what's going on, but you as the you as the gamer don't really care as much. But by the end of the story, of the entire game, you have spent so much time with these characters that you finally kind of understand the relationship that they have had. And so if you went back and played it again in the beginning, you probably would care more than you did right away in that beginning. And that's something that you can always suffer when you do a story where you jump right in. And the, the, the point that they make that do that for one character, and we'll talk about him in the spoiler review, in the spoiler talk, that for him... I found that I did not care about him. I didn't want to do anything for him. I was just like, you know, I'll let him go. And by the end of the story, I really loved that character. And I really liked spending time with him. And I really appreciated him and a whole lot more that I can't talk about. So, but the story overall is, is, is is pretty well done. Obviously, just like a TV show and just like this game, there are, there are story plots that like are like episodes that some episodes fall flat and don't work as well and some episodes are really really good and so it's just like an overarching tv show they got their ups and downs but overall the story is well made and i really really liked what i got to experience out of the story now the game looks absolutely stunning and beautiful in many different aspects and it sells that you are in the middle of the country in the united states that you're uh, that you're yeah and you're in the middle of the heartland of the United States the map has all different kinds of settings it's got you could be on the tops of mountains to being in the deep woods to being into barren landscapes it just has such variety in its areas that you really feel great moving through everything nothing gets too boring in regards to the environment and you start to as you play this game and you're riding in these areas you really learn the roads really, really well, which comes in handy later on in the game. The weather and the lighting are some of the best I've seen in all, in, in games. And I'm speaking of playing from the RE engine, which I say the lighting is amazing with it. But the the lighting and the weather mechanics in this in, in the engine that they are using is so good. It's pretty much on par with RE4 in regards to the lighting. It's just well, well done. And the weather mechanic that they have and just the sun going through the trees, such detail that is just really appreciated in every aspect of this game. The animations are pretty pretty well done, and they do really help to sell the story that you're trying to witness. Now, in the cutscenes, they're really animated in regards to characters and their interactions and their facial animations and all that kind of stuff. It does fall a little bit on the wayside when you're just talking to NPCs and it's not an official cutscene. The animation in their faces are very, very mild, if not really there, and it doesn't really sell that portion of your experience with them, but the cutscenes do enough that sell you into that area of the story. Now, you always, to like get through these beautiful and treacherous environments, you got to use your trusty motorcycle. And, you know, it is used for more than just transport. It's also used for ways to escape. It's to also, you could 
store ammo on your bike. You can also hurt enemies with your bike. And there's a lot more you can do, but it's more than just a tool to transport yourself from area to area. The only thing that you want to make sure your bike is maintained and always has enough gas to be able to get you to each destination because literally they do make the bike a lifeline for you that you cannot survive out there without your bike. And so being that you're uh, limited, you need to make sure that you are taking care of this because it is precious. And there are moments where I had my bike break down on me and to get back was a struggle a bit because of the enemies that are around you in the environment and have to get back. There are great tools and tricks. And one of my favorite little things I figured out when I was playing when I was riding my bike, I found if I, I didn't have to use any gas is I didn't have to pull the gas trigger when I was going down a hill and it would naturally roll down the hill at a, at a pretty a good enough speed so I could save on gas. Same thing when I ran out of gas, I tried to find hills where I could be able to go down it so I could get some momentum to be able to travel to the space I needed to to be safe. Now, in the beginning, you're really limited in regards to how far you can travel on a and a gallon a, a, on a tank of gas, but you can upgrade your bike just like uh, in every in you can upgrade your bike in many many different areas cosmetically and in cosmetically you do upgrade it in its different areas of traction and it's it's um, it's basically how much it lasts long enough so you don't have to repair it as often and also you have enough gas so you can you know get in farther distances and by the time I did all my upgrades I basically could pretty much get almost all the way across the entire map on a on a tank of gas by the end of it but in the beginning you're pretty limited so you just need to make sure that you're being mindful of how you need to take care of your bike now while you're in these environments, you do need to stay on your guard because when you leave any safety zone that you have, there's a lot that's coming up against you. It can be people that want to do like normal people that want to hurt others. It could be nature of different kinds of creatures like wolves and bears and a lot more that I don't want to spoil for you. And also there are different kinds of infected creatures and each have their own unique challenge and it can be just as dangerous as any other. And the environment really interacts with each other to make a great ecosystem. And you can use each each part of the system to affect one another. So an example is I could be attacking a camp of people and because of the sound of the gunfire, the main uh, one of the main groups of uh, infected called freakers they could hear the sound and start running to the area they hear the sound and then start attacking any living thing they see so that can include your enemies so that's a way to you could lure the freakers to come kill your enemies for you it's there's many ways to handle that there's also another one with nature where after i killed the enemies and just saying the freakers didn't get involved in this time i just took out the camp and in came wolves, just normal wolves to eat on the flesh of the humans that I killed because they need food. And so when they came into the camp, they started attacking me because I am food for them too. So it just shows how the ecosystem naturally interacts with each other. And it's just so great to see that because it just adds more strategy to how you are interacting in this environment and be more careful in your decisions when you're handling different situations. You got to be in mind of what time of day it is, what's the weather like, who's there, where's the nearest horde of freakers, have you seen any creatures lately that might be in the vicinity, and that affects really your decisions to be able to attack and tackle any kind of task that you have. Now, the infected come in very different unique types. I mentioned freakers as one. They're the more easier enemy to annihilate, but they come in a lot bigger packs, which makes them more tricky. But there's also other types of, of infected that you meet along the way, and each come with their own different style in regards to how to tackle them and their strengths and weaknesses. And it just, it, it make, I think the biggest element, though, of this game that I say that is different than any other game on the market really is the freakers but before you even get to the freakers sometimes in the environment as well is there are nests 
And if you take out their nest, you kind of lower the population because they like to nest in, uh, in dark and enclosed areas. But the big thing that really makes this game extremely different than any other game on the market is the Freaker Hordes. Now, they feature up to 500 Freakers at once in one area. And first of all, at the very beginning, all you can do is run. You are not equipped to handle a squad. If you are, you are using every aspect of every ammo of anything you can think of. It is near impossible to handle these in the beginning. So all you can do is run. But eventually you will start being able to get better weapons, have, have, have a better idea of uh, getting better tools to be able to tackle these tasks and take these hordes on. And I've the last time I felt this exhilaration and fear while I was taking on a horde, imagine these are 500 creatures running at you at the same time, and they are not slow. They are pretty quick. You need to keep on your feet and understand how you're going to tackle them as a task. And I have not experienced such uh, such thrillness in this area since I played Left 4 Dead. Now, I would say the difference that I feel like this is a, a one-up of Left 4 Dead is because in Left 4 Dead, you're in a group. You have a group of people that you work together to be able to handle that. This is on your own. You have no one to help you. You make a mistake, you're a goner. The group, at least in the group saying of Left 4 Dead, you had you could rely on others to help you if you, if you went down. Here, uh, uh you don't have a shot if you cannot handle it on your own. Now, to take on everything, you can either use gun weapons or melee weapons. That melee weapons you could eventually craft to become even more powerful weapons, and you can also buy more powerful guns throughout the game. Now, uh, these melee you can use these melee weapons or you can create other tools as well like molotov cocktails pipe bombs and uh and different items like that using scavenged materials where you can get like kerosene and you need to get bottles and you need to get you know uh, nails and you need to get uh a, a tin cans so you need to get different items and then you can craft them once you start going through the game and upgrading these things to be able to create great tools to be able to take on different kinds of infected and when you take on a horde you're using it all you're using all your tools that you have in your toolbox to be the most successful in that moment now you can stealth it out which i highly recommend because i think it's your first best action because like i mentioned before guns I mean, you can go guns a-blazing, but you, again, you need to take an account of the environment that's around you. You don't want to bring in a freaker horde on yourself if you're taking on and doing a firefight constantly. You know, you have to be very strategic. And so I always try to play it out with stealth first to lower the odds. And then when I had only a couple left, then I maybe would use a gun if I got spotted. But it's just easier I found it that way to do it. But again... You just need to be mindful and strategic in, in regards to the ecosystem and the environment that's around you to be able to handle it. But everything you do in this game has some kind of perk and some kind of motivation to do so. You could do handle enemy camps and those enemy camps can come with uh, a map of, of different areas that you need to know about that would be important for your knowledge. Uh, or you can do different kinds of jobs for different kinds of camps, which gives you um, means to purchase things from camps um, in the world, which we'll talk about in a minute. Now, to help out to get to the helping you out, they have the different camps and you earn credits by doing tasks for them. You can also and you can use those uh, you can use those credits which are only good at that specific camp. That's a really important aspect of it. So you need to kind of have some variety in regards to who you do tasks for so that you make sure that you have enough credits between all the different camp locations so that you're not limiting yourself when you do need the you need the credits to be able to use it for a certain area. You can use them to re 
for your bike to upgrade it. You can repair your bike if it's being broken down a bit. You can refuel your bike. And you also can purchase different kinds of weapons in that environment too. Now, there's another way you can earn credits. You can do it by collecting ears from the dead. Basically, when you kill a creature, if you stand next to it, you're going to collect its ear. And that's, that's a point of bounty that you can use. And then as you take on more powerful creatures uh, in different infected uh uh, different types of infected, they're worth more in value when you take them out. So there's there's some incentive to, to really try to do those things. Or you can also kill animals, regular animals, and collect the meat and then sell it to the sell it to the camp as well for credits. And the camps each have their own feel, each operate really differently. And the personalities that run them are really unique and fun. And I just really liked being able to uh, go to each environment, each camp, and kind of get to know the style, the people, and they each just have their own. And that's, I think that's so great because it adds some more variety to the game itself and the characters that are around you. They did, in some some of the camps, they underutilized them. I think they should have used them a little bit more. But overall, I think they did a really good job. Uh now, this game has so many bugs. I can't deny that. Just like all the reviewers, they have. And while they are improving them, these are the ones that I've ran into so far. And I cannot confirm. I have not played it within the last five days or so. And I know they are constantly, every time I put in, every time I was playing the game again, I had a new update. So I know they're constantly updating this game. But these are the ones I ran into, which do affect my thoughts on this game. Uh, one, uh, the audio did in cutscenes go out of sync where the audio would be faster than the actual animations of the characters. And so um, what I had to do to fix that, because it because once it started, it never ended. Now, it only happened in the cutscenes themselves. It didn't happen when I was just talking to an NPC on a regular Reg, just talking regularly uh, but once the once the audio issue happened it stayed consistent throughout every cutscene so I had to turn off the game like close the app relaunch the game and then it was fixed just fine I only had to do it once so that's just so you're aware because then I didn't ran into I didn't run into that issue again uh, I had one issue that only happened once where the auto audio completely cut out I got on my motorcycle and all of a sudden I couldn't hear anything like just couldn't hear the motorcycle I couldn't hear the environment I couldn't hear the creatures I just couldn't hear anything it was just which I forgot to say the sound by the way the sound design in this game is phenomenal not only the visuals sell the environment the the audio really sells this environment that you're really in the woods with nature and in uh, ironically there's freakers in that area too so I, I think that's great uh and then the last one that I ran into was I ran into a, a horde of freakers and I went across a bridge and they fell through the bridge. <laughs> so uh, that helped me get an easy escape, but it did happen. Now, they I think they're all definitely easily fixable and, you know, they definitely affected my experience, but not to the point where I was feeling like this game was oh, horrible and broken it's like these are very minor things that easily became fixable and or didn't happen ever again once they once they happened now one thing that did affect me throughout the game that I want wanted to talk about which I don't think is a bug at all and it's how many loading screens are in this game usually I'm not a complainer of loading screens I understand we sometimes need loading screens but before every single cutscene there was always a loading screen and it was always la at least 10 seconds before the load completed now the only reason why I'm talking about this is because I found it really frustrating because sometimes I would say about three to four times it would happen where there are three to four different kinds of cutscenes that would happen sequentially at the same time. So uh, you would have three cutscenes in a row and four cutscenes in a row. And between each of those cutscenes, it's got to load 10 seconds. So you have a cutscene, load, cutscene, load, cutscene, load. And it just, it broke up the, it broke up the feel in the, in, in, it just it broke up the feel and the movement of the scenes and it just was a little jarring it became very jarring in those moments when it, when you have just one cutscene and it's a 10 second load just to load it up 
I can forgive that. That's fine. But when it was so many sequences happening at the same time and you're, they're supposed to flow together, it just did not work for me at all whatsoever. But like I said, this game is a good game. It is a really good game, and I think it has really good things that makes it different than any other game in the market right now, and it really has the potential to be a great franchise, like an un it, has a, it has the potential to be the next Uncharted, the, in regards to, you know, the first game was good, and then the rest really blew up after the second game, and this has that potential. There are really great moments in the game that I will never forget. Honestly, they will not forget, and Sony Bend should have another shot at this. And this being their first AAA game, like I said earlier, they have, I mean, I think it's the right move to give them a second shot. I think it will be really interesting because of what has happened at the end of the game, of the direction they go, and if they choose to make one, I will be back to experience it and be really excited to see what direction they will take this. So that is my review of Days Gone. What did you think about the game? If you like this content, check out the rest of the content I have freeze frame rate. Let me know your comments below of what you think about the game. And if you like this content, check out the rest I have on the channel. Give it a thumbs up, share it, share it with your friends. And if you want to keep up with everything I release here on the channel each and every week, hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching and look forward to my spoiler talk coming out tomorrow. We have a lot to talk about in the spoiler section. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Mitch and I'm signing off saying see you soon.